On October 13th, SpaceX made history by successfully landing the Super Heavy booster on the launch tower, and they nailed it on the first try. Of course, none of this would have been possible without the crucial support of the grid fins, an aerodynamic surface essential to SpaceX's flight control strategy as the rocket plunges back through Earth's atmosphere. However, taking a closer look at Booster 12's journey, we can see that after Starship separated from Super Heavy, the grid fins showed signs of deformation. So, did the grid fins really perform as intended? And more importantly, what steps will SpaceX take to enhance this system in the future? Let's find out everything in today's episode. It's been two weeks since the Starship Flight 5 test, making this the perfect time for a deep dive into some of the mission's most intriguing technical details. This flight marked a historic milestone, so to celebrate, Elon Musk and SpaceX shared many stunning images of the booster landing, including close-ups of the noticeable deformations on the Raptor engines. But today, let's focus on one special, subtle, yet crucial technical feature that many might overlook. The grid fins, the giant's guiding arms. Grid fins are highly sophisticated aerodynamic control surfaces crafted with precision metalwork. Rather than being solid metal plates, they're designed with a complex lattice structure resembling a waffle, or as some say, a grill. These fins are capable of rotating around their roll axis, essentially acting as aerial rudders. Their main role? To adjust the rocket's direction during the most critical phase, the return descent. By precisely angling the grid fins, the control system can guide the booster back to its pre-designated landing spot with astonishing accuracy. In Starship's fifth flight, did the grid fins do their job well? Yes, they did. However, we noticed something significant. The grid fins showed signs of deformation during the hot staging phase, the critical phase where Starship stages separate. This wasn't entirely unexpected, given that the grid fins are located at the booster's top, right next to the hot staging ring. While this placement is ideal for aerodynamic control, it puts the grid fins through a grueling test during stage separation. Let's break down what happens in that intense moment. When the six Raptor engines of Starship's upper stage ignite, they release a massive exhaust plume directed down at the booster. This not only provides thrust for the upper stage, but also creates an extreme level of heat and pressure, impacting the grid fins directly. Careful observation of the images reveals an uneven temperature distribution on the grid fin's surface. The central portion of the lattice-like structure, which resembles a waffle, takes the brunt of the hot exhaust. Based on the exhaust's color, we can estimate that temperatures in this area likely reached around 1,400 degrees Fahrenheit, or about 760 degrees Celsius, hot enough to start weakening stainless steel. Meanwhile, the outer frame of the grid fins, which has a denser structure and less direct exposure to the exhaust, maintained a significantly lower temperature. This temperature difference led to uneven thermal expansion, causing the grid fins to warp in a distinctive way, with the central area bending more than the outer edges. Interestingly, this isn't unique to the grid fins. Recently, SpaceX successfully recovered the hot staging ring, and it showed similar deformation. This is hardly surprising, as both components are made of stainless steel and endure similar heat levels during stage separation. So, did SpaceX anticipate what would happen to the grid fins? Absolutely. Does this mean they need to fix it? Definitely but not immediately. In fact, optimizing Starship's grid fins will likely follow a similar path to that of the Falcon 9. In Falcon 9's early days, SpaceX used aluminum to make its grid fins. It seemed like a logical choice at first. Aluminum is light, easy to work with, and importantly, cheap. However, aluminum has a critical weakness, a low melting point. Even though Falcon 9 doesn't experience hot staging like Starship, the intense heat during atmospheric re-entry caused severe deformation in these aluminum grid fins. They even burned and melted. SpaceX experimented with a temporary solution by coating the grid fins in a heat-resistant white paint to protect their structure. However, this measure fell short as the grid fins continued to suffer damage. The need for frequent inspections, maintenance, or even replacement of grid fins after each flight has become a significant bottleneck in SpaceX's push for rapid reusability. This challenge led to a crucial decision, optimize the grid fin design on Falcon 9, and the same approach will inevitably apply to Starship in the future. They'll need to make that change. Although Flight 5's booster managed a successful landing with warped grid fins, this is not a long-term sustainable solution. Each exposure to intense heat and resulting deformation leads to a gradual buildup of metal fatigue in the stainless steel, which could seriously impact the reliability of the system in future flights. Currently, SpaceX's priority is proving the return-to-launch site RTLS capability before fine-tuning smaller details. This reflects SpaceX's test-fast, fail-fast philosophy. 
once they consistently demonstrate the reliability of RTLS through repeated successful landings, they'll shift focus to optimizing specific elements, including improvements to the grid fins. Improving the grid fins is an inevitable step. But the question isn't if, it's how. And when it comes to solutions, many have pointed to one direction, titanium. This suggestion makes sense, especially since the Falcon 9's grid fins are also made from titanium. In some ways, titanium is a super material. It boasts the highest strength-to-weight ratio of any industrial metal. Put simply, for the same weight, titanium is significantly stronger than steel. Or, if achieving equal strength, a titanium component would be much lighter than steel. Second, and perhaps most critical for Starship's grid fins, is titanium's remarkable heat resistance. With a melting point approaching 1700 degrees Celsius, titanium vastly outperforms stainless steel in maintaining its mechanical properties under high temperatures. Additionally, titanium has outstanding fatigue resistance, a crucial trait for components that must endure repeated flight cycles. Its ability to maintain mechanical strength through multiple cycles of high stress and temperature will extend the grid fin's lifespan, reducing the need for maintenance and replacement. So, will SpaceX end up using titanium to make the grid fins? Well, I used to think so, but no, they won't. The story of titanium isn't all sunshine. Titanium is shockingly expensive, costing at least 25 times more than stainless steel, and the processing costs are even more staggering. Casting, shaping, and treating titanium requires specialized equipment, extremely high temperatures, and a strictly controlled environment. The Falcon 9's grid fins are actually the largest titanium cast parts ever made in industrial history. No one has ever created a single titanium piece that large before. And here's the kicker. The grid fins for Super Heavy, SpaceX's new generation of rockets, are even larger. Steel. They'll stick with welded steel, but a new custom-developed stainless steel alloy created in-house by SpaceX's own materials science team. Their team has been quietly working on this special steel for years, and even Musk confirmed it after Flight 4. Speaks to the incredible resilience of stainless steel at temperature. We will further hone our SX-300 alloy to withstand even higher temperatures. It seems SpaceX's scientists have significantly increased the nickel content in this alloy, producing a type of stainless steel that has outstanding heat resistance. These high nickel steels have a much higher melting point than regular steel, while still maintaining the mechanical strength needed for aerospace applications. By making the grid fins out of the same material as the rocket body, SpaceX can streamline manufacturing and maintenance. They'll be easier to weld to other components and far more cost-effective. When we look at the official images of the Starship 5, 2, and V3 versions released by SpaceX, a familiar design stands out. Four grid fins evenly spaced at 90-degree angles, similar to the successful setup on Falcon 9. This configuration, proven across hundreds of Falcon 9 landings, provides stability and optimal control as the rocket re-enters the atmosphere. However, during Tim Dodd's The Everyday Astronaut latest visit to Starbase, Elon Musk shared an extraordinarily bold vision. He's considering reducing the number of grid fins to just three, or even two, a truly very aggressive idea. Musk's famous mantra, the best part is no part, seems alive here. He's all about stripping away parts until there's nothing left to remove. This approach is a hallmark of SpaceX's philosophy for developing Starship. They're constantly pushing to simplify and optimize every aspect of the rocket, even if it means challenging long-standing conventions in the space industry. Even so, these designs still have a long way to go before becoming a reality. All four grid fins will remain in place at least until Starship V3, and they are really essential for guiding the booster back to the catch tower. All right, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth looks at the latest advancements in space technology. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.